Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Inshallah, we'll continue on what start this morning. We're talking about Book of Knowledge. Uh, this is part of the chapter talking about Babum fi adabi al-mu'allimi wal-muta'allimi. This chapter concerning the proper behavior of the teacher and the student. Can we join a circle, please? Uh, As for the student of knowledge, he should to advance purification of the soul from all bad and evil before approaching the knowledge. Due to the fact that seeking knowledge, it is involved in the heart. It is a form of ibadah done by the heart. As a result of this, you need to Purify and cleanse your heart out of envy, jealous, uh, shirk, riya, showing off all these things. Also, it is recommended for him to cut all ties with anything that occupy his mind. That because if you could not focus, you are not going to reach. The early believers, they used to prefer knowledge over everything. It's been reported that Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahmatullah alayhi, may Allah send mercy in his soul, he didn't get married until after he became 40 years old. That means he spent his youth dedicating toward the knowledge because he felt that this will keep him or become an obstacle in seeking the knowledge. Imam Abu Bakr al-Ambari been given a gift, a slave girl. So when he have a privacy with her, so one of the questions or one of the subjects of knowledge, he forgot it. He could not remember immediately. So he said to one of his companions, take her out. She asked him, what did I do wrong? He said, no, nothing. But my heart started getting busy with you. And I don't see any valuable of anything to obstruct or to prevent me from the knowledge. The student of knowledge should be with his teacher like a, a sick person with the doctor to humble himself and do the best of serving him. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, he used to take the bridle of the horse or the camel of Zayd ibn Thabit. And he used to say, this is what we've been commanded to show respect and honor towards our scholars. When the student of knowledge doesn't humble himself, If a student of knowledge he doesn't see that he can benefit from those who proceed in him in this avenue, that is because he's ignorant. We have to understand word of wisdom is the lost of any believer. Wherever he found it, he will go and get it. 
you shouldn't present your opinion in the presence of the teacher. If the teacher made a mistake, this mistake is still a more beneficial for the student than his correct opinion. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, is saying, one of the beauty, one of the rights of the scholar that you specialize him with the greeting in addition of greeting everybody else. That means that if you greeted all the people, you go to give a greeting especially for the teacher. That he sat in front of him, then you don't wave with your hand in his presence. Neither you twinkle with your eyes or give a hint or signal with your eye to somebody. Neither are you supposed to ask too much questions in his presence and not to make it difficult for him or to insist on the answer. And don't insist if he became lazy. And don't keep bothering him if he did not give you the answer or he stopped talking. Don't hold his soap when he gets up. It means that means disturbing him, asking him to remain seated. Don't expose his secret. And don't backbite anybody in his presence. And don't be seeking for his faults and his mistakes. Don't be searching for them. If he made a mistake, you should accept his apology. Don't say to him, I heard so and so, saying so and so. If somebody he touched him, something he said. But I was in another class or I read another book and it says something different. And don't say I heard it from such and such different from what he's saying. Don't qualify any other scholars in his presence. And don't turn away from his long company. Do not deprive yourself of serving him. If he is in need for something, you should be the fairest of all those who are in the gathering to try to fulfill it. Because the scholar or the teacher to you is almost like a palm tree. You always be waiting for some fruits to fall in you. So that means the company of the teacher or the sheikh that will be always something useful for you and whenever that you find opportunity to spend time with him even if he's not teaching you something that you may see something from his behavior his discipline you will learn something brother habib you want to go over this Ethics of the teacher and the student. What? The student should start with purifying his own soul and steer clear of evil manners, for knowledge is the worship of the heart. He should dedicate his life for seeking knowledge. The early Muslim used to give precedence to knowledge over anything else. For example, Imam Ahmed. May Allah be, have mercy upon him, did not marry except after the age of 40. To the student, the teacher should be like a physician to a patient. The student should serve his teacher. In Jami Bayan al Ilm was Fadli ibn Abdul Bar stated that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them both, used to hold the reign of Zayd ibn Thabit's horse, and he said, 
This is what we are required to do with scholars. The student should be on his guard against feeling pride, for it is a flaw of the ignorant. He further should evaluate things and give preference to his teacher's opinion over his own. It is the right of the scholar to greet the public in general and for them to greet him in particular. You should sit before him and avoid overburdening him with questions. You should not divulge his secrets, nor backbite people in his presence, nor find their faults in his presence. The student at the beginning of seeking knowledge is recommended not to occupy his mind with the differences of scholars in order not to perturb his mind. As to the teacher, he should be patient and forbearing. He should dedicate his efforts in teaching knowledge for the sake of Allah and not to seek reward nor gratitude from people. Early Muslim scholars used to refuse gifts from students. The teacher should offer advice to his student and follow the best manner in this regard. The teacher, furthermore, should teach his student what the latter can understand and comprehend. More importantly, the scholar should behave according to his knowledge and Allah, the Most High, says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 42, of which the meaning is, Do ye enjoin right conduct on the people and forget to practice it yourselves? And yet ye study the scripture, will you not understand? Inshallah, we have a chapter that we had went over it uh, after Salat al-Fajr today. Uh, today is this morning or? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We're going to go over it, inshallah, for those brothers who are not present or they heard it, they can hear it again. <coughs> Nevertheless, that before we go to this chapter, we want to see the seriousness of a person seeking the knowledge of this deen for other than the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ عِلْمًا مِمَّنْ مِمَّا يُبْتَغَى بِهِ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ لَا يَتَعَلَّمَهُ إِلَّا لِيُصِيبَ بِهِ عَرَضًا مِنَ الدُّنْيَا لَمْ يَجِدْ عُرْفَ الْجَنَّةِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ that whosoever learn the knowledge which is related to this deen, the knowledge that we are supposed to do it for the pleasure of Allah, but he's not doing it for the sake of Allah, but he's doing it so he can gain something of this material thing of this life. He's not going to be qualify to get the pregnancy of paradise. So when is your intention of seeking knowledge, the knowledge of the deen, we are not talking about any other knowledge, chemistry, math, science, whatever, to get a degree, to have a good job, to be recognized in the country, or whatever, this is a different story. But we are talking about things related to Allah, to the deen of Islam, to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa things which we are supposed to learn it, to please Allah, learn it so we can fix our ibadah and put it in the right track, knowledge that we learn it so we can help the other Muslims and teach them. If you are not learn it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to benefit yourself and benefit the other Muslim, but you learn it for what? So, the people who will give you respect as example, or the people call you a scholar, or the people who stand for you when you get a comment, or write, or the people will give you whatever you want because now you're a scholar, so that you don't need because other intention, not the pleasure of Allah. So, as a result of this, you'll be deprived of having the pregnancy of paradise in the day of judgment. (laughs) 
The scholar does not have to be a poor person or depriving himself from the worldly things and things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it lawful. But he should try to minimize this worldly thing as much as possible. Especially that you're going to be in a position of leadership and example for others. Not all the people are the same. Some people can uh, carry or face pain, suffering, illness, and some people they could not. Okay? So we could not make this as a condition that a scholar have to be a poor person, he have to be with a raggedy clothes, with a, a beaded car, anything like this, okay? But he shouldn't have to be, you understand, going in the extreme, although the things is halal. So, it's halal to buy a car for 5000 and it's also still okay for you to buy a car for 10000 okay? So, we are not saying that you have to be walking in your feet, or if you buy a car beyond 5000 now you are not deserve to be a good imam or a good teacher but he shouldn't have to be you understand go to the extreme in the things even if it is halal nevertheless the scholars of the akhirah not the scholars of this dunya they have to know the the low value of this life and that the hereafter is more honorable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are not living in this life forever. And we have to understand that the hereafter and this Hayat dunya like two co-wives. And you know, usually, between two co-wives there is no peace. So, usually, okay? There is odd number of cases, we understand this, but... So you have to understand this is the dunya and the hereafter. They, like you say, fighting like cats and dogs. So you have to understand that your aim to be in the hereafter and busy with things which you, which you take you to the hereafter. So inshallah we won't go with the, this report from Shaqiq al-Balkhi a student and a teacher and see what did he learn. Shaqaiq al-Bukhari al-Balkhi al-Balkhi yeah have mercy may Allah have mercy on him said to Hazard you have accompanied me for some time what have you learned from me the latter replied I have learned the following eight things one I have noticed that people used to keep very valuable things they possess. Then I reflected upon the verse of the Quran from Surah Al-Nahl, of which the meaning is, 
what is with you must vanish, and what is with Allah will endure. So I decided to keep my valuable things with Allah most high. Number two, I have observed that everybody has a beloved one, but no beloved one can accompany the lover to the grave. Therefore, I have decided to love good deeds which would accompany me to my grave. Number three, I have reflected upon the glorious Quran, the verse from it that reads in Surah Al-Naziyat, verse 40, of which the meaning is, as for such as had entertained the fear of standing before their Lord's tribunal and has restrained their soul from Lord's desire. Accordingly, I have exerted myself to steer clear of whims until myself has accompanied to obeying Allah the Most High. Number four, I have looked at people's concern for property and authority. Then I pondered on the verse of Allah in the Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat, verse number 13, of which the meaning is, Verily the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is he who is most righteous of you. So consequently, I concern myself with consciousness and fear of Allah, most high, so as to attain honor in this world and the hereafter. Fifth, I have noticed the spread of enemy envy among people, and I reflected on the verse of Quran from Surah to Zuhra, Ayah 32, of which the meaning is, it is we who portion out between them their livelihood in the life of this world. Therefore, I kept away from envy. Number six, I have observed the spreading of enmity among people and then recited the Quranic verse in Surah Tufatim, verse number six, of which the meaning is, Verily, shaitan is an enemy to you, so treat him as an enemy. So I refrain from their enmity and insisted on maintaining enmity with the shaitan. Number seven, I have looked at people's humiliation in earning livelihood. And then I pondered over the verse of Quran in Surah Al Hud, verse number six, of which the meaning is, There is no moving creature on earth but its sustenance dependeth on Allah. Therefore, I concern myself with carrying out Allah's duties and put my trust in Him in every livelihood. And finally, I have observed that people depend on their trade, their manufacturing, their health, their school. Yet I decided to rely only on Allah Most High. Zakullah Inshallah, so we can see from this example of those that the student remain with the teacher for a long time, but all what he learned was eight things. It's not how much did he learn, but knowledge that you try to live what you learn and put it in action, this is the most, most important thing. So it's not how much did you learn, but how much did you practice from what you learned. <clears throat> so with this, inshallah, we'll come to this segment, unless somebody has any question concerning what we decide tonight. Hopefully that we can learn more about the mannerism and the behavior of a student of knowledge so we can act upon it because it's very important for our gathering, the way how we sit, the way how we talk. We want to ask how to deal with the teacher and how the teacher deals with the students. Tomorrow morning, inshallah, we don't uh, have... Uh, a segment because tomorrow is Juma, we're going to be doing Surah Al Kahf in the morning, inshallah, with, which is considered jihad for some of us, alhamdulillah. But I remember the first time that we start, we took an hour and a half. Now we're finishing it in about 30, 40 minutes, or even half an hour. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have a segment as well Saturday morning, as well Saturday evening, because inshallah I'll be in Charlotte. So the next is official segment will be inshallah Sunday morning, if Allah will. Okay? Anybody have anything before we close? Yes. Question. You, said, you said this life and the next life is like two co-ops, is that what you said? Yeah, they fight together.
that mean now you 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 between the two here okay which one that you're going to try to please which one incline too much towards the dunya so you're losing the akhirah incline too much towards the akhirah what you're missing is the dunya so is is illustration to show you understand that there's no is no harm between those two okay so your main focus is about the hereafter. You are in this dunya to, to try to use it as a means and ways to take you to Allah. Not for you to be living forever and to put all your hopes and wants in this life. Yes. Question. Um, when you were eating early at the, at the Maghrib. Excuse me, is this about the subject? Um, no. Okay, go ahead. What about um, when the people follow the Janazah prayer, mm. and if there's like a hundred people that come to the Janazah prayer, is it a hadith on that? About the person gets their sins forgiven or something like that? I'm not sure. Is it a hadith on this? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. No law on this list. Anybody yeah. else? Which book? Yeah. The same book. Uh, does this book say Masjid in the first page? <laughs> masjid property, or you can purchase it for one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he is reading the wrong page. Yeah. Oh, oh, the other page. Oh, the wrong book. book. Do not remove the Shall I read you when I get up? <laughs> I had ordered a few that okay. I have it inside the office, inshallah. Okay. You can have it before you leave. Okay, sure. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Thank you for being here tonight. And again, uh, although that I'm not going to have a segment, but I encourage you that you still come for Aisha prayer, Fajr prayer. Brother Habib will be reading some hadith from Riyad al-Salihin. And this will be an opportunity for you to go over the old segments, inshallah. Okay? And you remember that we already made an uh, announcement before, starting next week, that we're going to be starting to drag in people here and put them on the table and ask them to address the gathering to try to report about one of these segments, inshallah. Okay? Jazakallah khair. How are you expecting me to see your, your hand like this? <laughs> All right. But it's not about the class. I just want to know, um, will you record on um, CIC conference? Is you going to record that or not? If you come and record it, it will be recorded. Well, so, no promise, but I do my best, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan, subhanakallah, alhamdulillah. Shura ila 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 I need directions to a uh, conference. It's on the bulletin board, actually. The address is there. Okay. In sh do you have a GPS? No. Okay, let one of the brothers... I'll probably drive with you. Well, when, when you're going? When you leave, he's driving with you. He's going to leave when you leave. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs>